what's amazing to me, the thought that she and her husband planted those pine trees probably before they even built the house. And look at the size of them now. Over there, that would have been Emily Butler's property, right? Exactly, that's exactly it. And so that she would just walk down the street with her paints and decide where she was gonna paint at the moment. And we can actually match most of the oil sketches that are owned by the Scarsdale Library to a corner of a street. Anna Richards Brewster was an accomplished artist by her late teens. She was fiercely independent and determined to become a professional painter. Not an easy choice for a woman in an art world dominated by men in the late 1800s. Anna was born in Germantown, Pennsylvania in 1870. Her talent was evident as a child, and her parents, also artists, gave her the best art education possible. She studied with John Lafarge and William Merritt Chase. William Trost Richards, Anna's father, was an acclaimed painter known for his magnificent seascapes, and they often exhibited together in England and America. Anna Matlack Richards, Anna's mother, was a poet, philosopher, and writer. Anna would illustrate some of her mother's books, including a sequel to The Adventures of Alice in Wonderland. Anna's mother was a formidable woman who sometimes had a strained relationship with her independent daughter. She homeschooled her five children and they were all early achievers. Anna's brother Theodore went to Harvard at 14 and earned a doctorate at 21. He became the first American scientist to win a Nobel Prize in chemistry. Her brother Herbert, also a Harvard graduate, became a professor of botany at Barnard College in New York City. Anna's voluminous letters over a course of a lifetime included phrases in French, German, and Latin. In 1895, at the age of 25, Anna spent a year on her own in Cloverley, a small fishing village in Devon, England. Her paintings were well received and popular with a public nostalgic for places untouched by industrialization. The following year, she rented a studio in Chelsea where she lived for the next nine years building up an impressive range of work and connections to the art world. She broke away from her father's realistic techniques and experimented with looser brush strokes and different styles. She was recognized as one of America's finest Impressionist painters. In the summer of 1904, when Anna came to America to visit her family, she met her future husband, William Tenney Brewster. He was an English professor at Barnard College and the roommate of her brother Herbert. They had a long distance courtship through letters. Anna feared marriage would end her career as a painter, but William encouraged her artwork throughout their life together. Baby Herbert was born in 1906 and the Brewsters decided to move from Manhattan to Scarsdale to raise their child. They designed and built a beautiful arts and crafts style house. Unlike most houses, which are built parallel to the road, Anna's house was angled south, so her studio captured the north light favorite for painting. The Brewsters named their home Herbert's House, and Anna decorated some of the fireplaces with ceramic tiles she did of her son. However, their child never had the chance to live in the new house. A few months before the scheduled move, four-year-old Herbert died from complications due to pneumonia. 
Anna lived for the next 42 years in Scarsdale and continued to paint, teach, and exhibit, but stopped aggressively pursuing her career after her son's death. In Scarsdale, she painted and sketched many local scenes around her home in Fox Meadow and the Bronx River Valley, preferring to show the less developed landscapes of Scarsdale. Her painting called Horse and Buggy Days depicts a farm near the Brewster House. In 1910, when they arrived in Scarsdale, the smallest village in Westchester, there were few cars and only 1,300 residents. Another iconic farm scene portrays a brook that today runs through the front yards of homes on Fox Meadow Road. The hay shown in this picture was an important export crop, and it also fed the thoroughbred horses owned by the wealthier landowners here. Snow-covered Scarsdale was a favorite theme for Brewster, and there are many beautiful examples in the library's collection. Fenimore Bridge, leading to the Hartsdale train station, is still a familiar route for many residents. Professor William Brewster probably crossed this bridge daily to take the train to 125th Street to teach at Barnard College. The Duck Pond is another recognizable Scarsdale landmark painted by Anna. The Heathcote Association created this pond in 1900 on what used to be the Underhill Farm, and they built the first houses on Heathcote and Sherbrooke Roads. Brewster was also an excellent portrait painter, and she was commissioned to do a portrait of John Dickinson, one of the founders of the Scarsdale Library. Always active in Scarsdale, Anna was a founding member of the Scarsdale Art Association and the Women's Club. Several of her paintings are displayed in the club, including one from her trip to Tunisia. The Brewsters traveled all over the world when William was on sabbatical, and Anna painted a wide variety of subjects and landscapes. When Anna Richards died in 1952, she had created over 4,000 works of art. In the introduction to his book of sketches by his wife, William Tenney Brewster wrote, above her natural talent for drawing and her sound training, the quality of her pictures came from her character. I do not see how anyone but an excellent person could have made these sketches. They are the expression of a beautiful and untroubled mind of wide and penetrating sympathies.